Where should you invest your most valuable resources as a creator? Whether it's your time, your money, your education, your skills, where should these resources be allocated? That is what we're gonna talk about today. The four most important places for you to invest your time and your money. So let's get right to it. Hey y'all, Crystal here today, and we are talking about where to invest your time and your money, your most valuable resources, right, in your content. Now, I get a lot of people that come to me and say, I'm frustrated that I'm not getting the results that I want, or things just aren't moving as fast as I thought that they would, and it usually comes down to the investment of your resources. So today, I really wanna focus in on the four key skills that you can invest in as a creator that can help you just advance faster and make a bigger impact with the content that you're creating. So let's dive right in. Number one, editing. It should come as no surprise that when you're creating content, you're gonna have to have it edited in some format, whether it's editing videos, editing podcasts, editing written blogs, or having other social posts edited. Like editing is such a big component. And I can tell you that this has been some place that in the beginning, I did not wanna invest a lot of money. I really didn't. I, when I first started with podcasting, I started with the free software Audacity, and I just said, you know what? This is good enough. This will work for me. I spent my time, this is what I invested, my time, not my money, in the beginning, learning how to use Audacity, watching tutorials about Audacity, and just trying to make the most of this resource that I had. But fast forward a few years into my podcasting journey, I said, I really need a better software. Like I'm all about this now. I'm no longer in the testing phase of, am I actually gonna do this podcasting thing? Is it gonna stick? I fell in love with podcasting and I said, I'm gonna upgrade to a better software. So from there, I started using Hindenburg and it's just been fantastic for me. It works for all the different things that I wanna do and it's just a very simple software, yet it does the things that I need it to do. So that was how I invested my time at the beginning and then later my money into an editing software that could really help me go further faster with my podcast. Now, when it comes to video, I have done, like I mean, across the board, I have invested time learning iMovie in the beginning. This is what how I got started on my YouTube channel. I did iMovie, then I advanced to Camtasia, which is actually the video software I use today because I leapt too far forward, y'all. I leapt to Adobe Premiere and I invested lots of time. I invested money because it was a monthly subscription, but I committed to 90 days. I was like, I will commit 90 days of investing my time because it was a, a subscription and I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it 90 days and my money. And it just was too complex for me. It had way too many bells and whistles, way too much customization and the learning curve was too steep for me at the time, whenever I was trying to learn this new software, I was also producing three YouTube videos a week on top of two podcast episodes, on top of a weekly newsletter, on top of social posts, so it was way too much. I like a bit off more than I can chew in trying to learn all the different things. So it was too much of an investment and I was overstretched. So I just went back to what I already knew and that was Camtasia. So when it comes to editing, I know that there's a full spectrum. There's gonna be people out there that expect perfection and they want it to be like top notch, top dollar. Then maybe investing in editing will look like hiring an editor to actually do all these things for you. If you have the budget for it, you have the money, resources, make it happen. I think that's a great choice. But then you're gonna have the other spectrum of people that are like, I really just don't have the budget to do it. I don't have a lot of money, but I do have time. I have time on the weekends. I have, you know, a little bit, a few hours after work or, you know, time that is gonna be spent in researching and learning and just doing different things like watching YouTube videos or investing your time in educating yourself on how to work this um, new software or new platform. So wherever you land in that spectrum of spending a bunch of money or spending a bunch of time, I hope that you find the right place that can work for 
for you on investing in those skills at becoming a better editor and whatever type of content that may look like. But I want you to tell me in the comments, what type of content are you creating? Whether it's podcast, YouTube, blog, or a mix of all three. I wanna know in the comments, that way we can chat a little bit further in the future about what it looks like to create these different types of content. The second place where I want you investing your time and your money as a creator is in your funnels. Now I can tell you as someone that has been marketing forever and specifically in the digital marketing space for the last five plus years, I have never regret when I've spent time and money in my funnels, making them better, improving them, optimizing them, testing them. Like I've never regretted the time or the money spent there. I will say that there have been a few different platforms that I tried that didn't work out for me. And yeah, I lost a little bit of money in the process, but I also don't feel like I lost out because I'm not wondering could I have used this one funnel because it you know, claims to make you millions of dollars and made millions of dollars and that's just not the case for me. Again, I am all about testing, like what kind of budget am I willing to risk, right? Because we don't know if it's gonna work out and how much time am I willing to invest to see if this platform will work for me. And again, this typically goes back to around 90 days that I'll try something and I'm pretty risk averse, so I'm not gonna invest thousands of dollars, but I may be willing to invest a few hundred dollars in a platform to see if it will work for me. So customer journey, customer funnels, marketing funnels, like there's so many rabbit holes that we can go down with that. And I'm actually gonna create another video specifically to customer journeys, but I do wanna throw out that you can't go wrong if you invest your time and your money in those customer or audience experiences. Number three, your time getting better. Now, what this means is practicing, right? They say practice makes perfect. It's basically a cat poster. And I have to agree. I mean, I'm sitting here today, five years into my content creator journey, and I wouldn't be able to just set up a camera and hit play and go without having years of practice and created so many YouTube videos, so many podcast episodes. And when people come to me and say, I want to feel confident, I want to just really feel like myself and I want to feel comfortable behind the microphone or behind the camera, I tell them, well, you got to turn it on. Like You got to just hit record, hit record and make it happen. And usually I met with that, like, I really don't want to do it. I, I don't like tell me anything else besides that. But the truth is investing your time, investing your money in just getting better and practicing. And again, this goes back to the spectrum because it could mean that you invest time just practicing over and over and over again, creating whatever it is that you're creating for your content. Or it could mean hiring a coach, buying a program, investing in software or a platform that's going to make you better as you keep practicing. But it's absolutely one of those key areas Areas that you just got to keep evaluating the best way to allocate your resources whenever it comes to practicing and getting better. And then the fourth and final skill that you need to invest in as a creator is getting out of your comfort zone. Oh, okay. So quick story. When I first started my podcast, it was called The Rookie Life way back in the day. And when I first got started, the hardest part was just hitting publish, right? Just hit publish, put it out there, and like you're sitting on pins and needles, like, is anybody gonna listen to this? <laughs> is, or is my mom gonna listen? Do I have any friends? Like there's so many psychological things that happen when you first hit publish on your content. But then after that, you just kind of keep going on your journey. And then you hit a point where you're like, okay, I've been doing this long enough. Do I need to keep doing it the same way? You hit this path where you're like, do I get out of my comfort zone or do I con keep continuing the same route, hoping for different results? And so when you hit that critical path, you have to decide, am I gonna invest more time or am I gonna invest money in getting out of my comfort zone? So again, this could go back to practicing, educating yourself, learning a new skill. Like there's so many different ways that you can like splinter off in the path. But at the end of the day, if you're not getting out of your comfort zone, 
it's really hard for you to grow. I'm not going to say that you can't grow because I think, you know, people say that. I'm like, oh, I've grown. Like there's places where, you know, I haven't tried too many crazy things in the kitchen and I've gotten to be a better cook (laughs) as I continue to cook, you know, meals for my family. But at the end of the day, if I'm not getting out of my comfort zone, then I'm not trying anything new. I'm just learning how to make really good spaghetti and meatballs. Like, you know, it's only so far that you can take that, right? Like, Everybody's going to get sick of it eventually. So I want to encourage you to get out of your comfort zone. Spend time investing your time, your dollars, getting out of your comfort zone, and it will help you grow as a creator. But that's all I have for you today. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the thumbs up where you're watching this video so you can get more videos just like it. We share so much content around creating content with confidence. And if you have any other questions about content, put them in the comments below. But that's all I have for you. So as always, remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere.